you are probably familiar with two ways to multiply two vectors in R3, the inner product and the outer product. The inner product yields a scalar and the outer product yields a vector. In this video, we will encounter a third way to multiply two vectors, the so-called dyadic product. This product yields a tensor as a result. In this video, you will learn what the dyadic product is, how to compute it, and the relation with linear algebra. So, let us take a look. So, first some notation, we will call the W the dyadic product that we denote it as AB, just next to each other, or A with this symbol over here. Well, in the book I'm using, they use a notation like this, so I'll stick to that in this video. So that's the notation. How do you compute a dyadic product? Well, you compute W times C, so it's defined as a W times some other factor. And how is that? Well, your W was your AB, so you have to compute AB times C. And how is that computed? Well, actually, quite easy, as A times inner product B, inner product C. So W times C yields a scalar times a vector, so W times C yields a vector. So, first of all, we are going to show that W is a tensor, because what's happening, you feed a vector in into your W and you get a vector out. So it looks like it is operating as a matrix. Let's show that. Well, in order to show that, we have to show that uh, W is linear. So we look at W working on alpha times C plus D. Now we have by definition that W equals AB times alpha C plus D. So how is our dyadic product defined? Well, what you do is you just leave your A and you take the inner product of your B with, with what is on the right side of that. So with alpha times C plus D. Now your inner product is linear. So B inner product alpha C plus D is just alpha times B inner product C plus B inner product D. So that's what we get here, alpha times b in a product c plus b in a product d. And now we see that we can rewrite this as alpha. What we have here is just w times c by definition. And what we have here is just by definition w times d. So we see indeed w working on alpha c plus d equals alpha times w working on c plus w working on d. So w is indeed linear, so it is a tensor. Next, let's take a look how we can compute the components of W. Well, as we know, the components are always given by computing Wij equals Ei inner product W times Ej. So if we want to compute the Wij, all those numbers, we have to take the inner product of Ei with Ab working on Ej. Now, by definition of the dyadic product, Ab working on Ej equals A times the inner product of B with Ej. So that's what's done over here. But if you take the inner product of B with Ej, you're just selecting the j's component of B, so the Bj. So you're left with the number Bj times vector A. And if you now take the inner product of Ei with this vector, you're just selecting the i's component of A. So you get the number Ai times Bj. So the matrix of your W contains uh, the e AIBJ. So uh, for, for example, the uh, first row, then your, uh, this, this first row, your I is one, and your B runs from uh, one to, your J runs from one to three. So you get an A1B1, and then A1B2, and then A1B3. So that's the matrix representation of your tensor W. And you see, you can write this as vector times vector as follows. If you take your A first as a column vector times B as a row vector, you get exactly this matrix over here. So that is how you can re rewrite your dyadic product as vector times vector. This is how you get the matrix representation. Now, a consequence, a nice consequence of this, is if you take simple dyadic products like E1 times E1, and then the matrix. 
if you take E1 times E1, you basically have 1, 0, 0 times 1, 0, 0, you get this matrix over here, with only a 1 here, zeros everywhere else. And if you take E1 times E2, again, you get only 1, 1 over here in this case, and zeros everywhere else. So using this, you can rewrite the matrix of your tensor T using a 9 of these matrices, because it's basically your T1, 1, the element over here, times your E1, E1 1, plus your element over here, T1, 2, times E1, E2, and so on and so forth. So this means that you can rewrite your T as uh, Tij times your Eiej. So in this way, you can write, uh, uh, you basically expand your uh, tensor T in, say, some basic tensors, similar to uh, uh, the way you can ex uh, expand a vector in E1, E2, E3, and you can expand your tensor T in uh, your dyadic products E1, 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 E2, and so on. So that's a nice consequence of our dyadic product.